There are dozens of hydroelectric dams on Tennessee's rivers, providing cheap, non-polluting, and renewable energy to more than 10 million people in seven states. Americans had a lot of benefits from these dams, with the recreation in the, in the reservoirs behind the dams, uh, the fishing and swimming in the reservoirs, uh, the cheap hydropower, and for, for sure the flood control aspects. But there is a downside because of the damage done to the environment. The downside here is the loss of natural fish habitat in a 25,000 square mile area known as the Cumberland Plateau, home to the largest number of endangered species in North America. A biologically rich zone, conservationists consider one of the 12 most threatened wildlands in the Americas. The damming of rivers has permanently changed the watersheds and fish populations all over the southeastern United States. Catfish, bass, and gar were once found everywhere in Tennessee's waterways. Because largemouth bass are popular with anglers, wildlife authorities stock lakes and rivers with 250,000 bass each year. But warm water fish like bass and crappie cannot survive in the perpetually cold water at the bottom of large reservoirs. Our basic job in managing a river like this tailwater here is to provide a fishery in a place that's totally artificial. The, the native species are gone. Uh, we're, de we're dealing with cold water here that wouldn't normally be here. So that, that requires us to stock rainbow trout and brown trout in this river to provide a fishery for people. Other species of fish wouldn't survive in this cold water. Today, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service raises trout in hatcheries, like this one in Dale Hollow. Our bread and butter fish is a rainbow trout. I think mainly because they're fairly easy for anglers to catch. They're pretty easy to grow on a hatchery and pretty disease resistant. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers monitors temperature and oxygen levels below the dam. In late summer, the water from the turbines has lost most of its oxygen. So for about two months every year, the Corps bypasses one of the three turbines and releases water through a hole at the bottom of the dam. The water slams into a concrete wall and shoots into the air, picking up life-sustaining oxygen. The process is called sluicing. What we're doing with the sluicing operations is we're blending uh, ox highly oxygenated water from the sluice gate with lower uh, oxygen levels that are found in the hydropower turbines uh, this time of the year. If the water here wasn't aerated, these trout would turn belly up and die. Trout will try to reproduce, laying eggs in the gravel below the dams. But those eggs are doomed. Then they open up the generators either for flood control or to generate hydropower, flush the eggs downstream. So although uh, these salmonids are able to spawn in these tailwaters, uh, there's very little natural reproduction. If it wasn't for the hatcheries, again, there wouldn't be any recreational fishing there. The Tennessee Valley Authority modified one of its dams by adding an oxygen injection system and a labyrinth weir to provide constant and gentler water flows downstream, allowing brown trout to reproduce naturally. Right now, we don't stock brown trout in that river, and there's a phenomenal brown trout population. So that's kind of like the goal here. If we could get it where we don't have to stock fish, it would be a lot cheaper and the fish, the fishermen actually prefer to see wild fish, who, who wouldn't? But establishing wild trout below most of these dams is unlikely in rivers that can rise or fall several feet in a single day, depending on the dam's discharge. Until engineers figure out a way to generate power without flushing fish eggs downstream, hatcheries like this will have to keep stocking these rivers well into the future. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.